the beginning of the season, I seriously thought that Aston Martin could be a challenger for P2 in the World Constructors Championship. Have they simply lost their way in the development race against teams like McLaren? Or did the FIA find them exploiting some pretty tricky flexible aerodynamic surfaces. Now, this isn't going to be some clickbait conspiracy video. After 10 years of trackside performance engineering and simulator development in Formula One, I think there's some pretty interesting things I can talk about concerning vehicle performance and even what a flexible front wing would do for car performance. So let's talk about it and look through the data and see what that says about Aston Martin's downfall this season. Until the Spanish Grand Prix, Aston Martin were second in the Constructors' Championship, with Fernando Alonso finishing on the podium five out of six races. Since then, they've fallen back to fourth in the Constructors' Championships, with only two podiums in that time. And if we look at their qualifying performance relative to the fastest team of each qualifying, they've also substantially dropped off since then. The low-speed circuits of Monaco saw Fernando Alonso's best qualifying performance just a couple tenths of a percent off of pole, but since then, they've fallen back to frequently over one percent off of pole, with some okay performances in both Singapore and Hungary. The biggest speculation is that TD18 or Technical Directive 18 is to blame for Aston Martin's downfall since Canada or maybe even before that. A technical directive is simply just a clarification on rules that already exist, but very rarely do the public see this. It's usually only circulated amongst the teams and then sometimes, in this instance, the FIA sent it to the media outlets. It appears the FIA started talking to teams around Baku about flexible front and rear wings. And by the Dutch Grand Prix, Technical Directive 18 was applied. The document clarifies simply that the wings are not allowed to move relative to the bodywork or each other. And it also focuses specifically on the way in which the wings, like the front wings, are mounted to the nose and the rear wings are mounted to the pylons. The teams will also have to supply detailed drawings about how these wings are mounted to the bodywork, nose, and rear wing and crash structure of the car. Keep in mind that the FIA already have a specific set of tests that they do almost every weekend to check the deflection of wings and bodywork. But before we can say that Technical Directive 18 definitely hurt Aston Martin, we need a little bit more context to understand how front and rear wings are used in a Formula One car, and then we can see what happens when they start moving. Now, the rear wing of a Formula One car dictates the overall drag and downforce level of the car. This is the fast in the corners versus fast on the straights setup compromise. The only movable part here is the DRS flap. The front wing on the car is used to balance out how much downforce is coming from the rear wing and the rest of the car. The front wing has adjustable flaps which are used to set how powerful the front wing is. After the front wing is set to achieve a specific aero balance, the engineers can then use this front wing flap to fine tune the balance for different tires and different track conditions. Aero balance is just the word used to describe how much aerodynamic force is acting on the front of the car relative to the rear of the car. More forwards aero balance gives the front tires more grip, which would make more oversteer, and then more rearwards aero balance or less aero balance would give more grip to the rear of the car, making the car more stable or understeer. So rear wing, downforce and drag, front wing, aero balance. But this concept of aero balance doesn't mean that it's a single value. Aero balance is more of a characteristic that can change with ride height, yaw, roll, steer, and a bunch of other vehicle states. And all cars with aerodynamics have an inherent aero balance and downforce versus speed kind of characteristic. So let's talk about what happens when you say, for example, have a flexible front wing. Now, a front wing that backs off is a very interesting and often quite desirable characteristic. The back off front wing will deflect, it will lose load and aero balance as the car speed increases. This could be desirable as it complements the inherent characteristics of the tires or the aerodynamic or overall setup philosophy of a car. Also, consider we know that these ground effect cars really don't like working at super, super low ride heights. A back off front wing may complement this very nicely. Imagine the front wing backs off and loses load at the same rate at which the floor starts to lose load as it gets super close to the ground. We could achieve a, a more balanced car. Now, some of the speculations I've read is that a back off front wing will shed drag, and this really isn't the case. In terms of drag level, the rear wing and overall car set the drag level, and the front wing flap angle isn't really a factor. It's second order or even smaller. And if you put this in context of Aston Martin, up until Monaco, they were one of the slowest cars cars in a straight line, so low drag really wasn't one of their strengths. Let's talk about what a flexible front wing does and then how you can set up the car around it. We'll start off with the hypothetical rigid front wing. In reality, all wings and surfaces deflect under load. There's no such thing as a rigid wing. But this hypothetical rigid front wing that we're talking about doesn't contribute to any balance or load shifts with speed. The high speed and low speed aero balances are just whatever the overall car is doing, and we'll refer to that as our reference. And here is our reference lift coefficient at high 
and low speed. Again, this is just an arbitrary reference. Now let's introduce a back off front wing and it would do something like this. Remember this front wing loses load with speed. So we would have less aero balance at high speed and less overall load at high speed. But we now need to figure out how to rebalance this car potentially. And there's a couple of useful things that we could do. How useful these rebalances are really depend on the overall car and tire characteristics. Let's say that the back off front wing made our car understeer at high speed. We could just crank up the front wing flap angle in order to match the balance at high speed. And our new characteristics would look something like this. Now we're just a little bit forwards aero balance in medium speed and quite a bit forwards aero balance in low speed. And it's interesting to note that we would also end up with more medium and low speed down force. As the aero balance is forwards at low speed, you would have to make other adjustments to the car to rebalance this characteristic. But the Pirellis of the last few years have notoriously lacked front end at low speed, so it wouldn't be surprising that this might be a desirable overall characteristic to try to achieve. And this is a great way to get more overall load in the medium and low speed corners overall. And this conclusion is pretty interesting once we look at Aston Martin's performance data from the first half of the season, which we'll come back to. But before we get to the rest of the video, we need to talk about something very important for F1 fans, and that's how you watch Formula One. One of the biggest problems with watching F1 is every country has its own streaming service, and some of them are much better than others. Or if you've ever gone away for vacation, you found out that you can't use the subscription service that you pay for because they are geo-blocked. And that's where NordVPN, the sponsors of this video, can help you out. And I've been using them for over a year for exactly this reason. Nord are giving you four months free when you sign up to their two-year plan. And to make it even more of a no-brainer, they're offering you a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you don't pay for anything. Be sure to check out nordvpn.com front slash break F1 or just click the link down below. With NordVPN, I can make sure that I have access to the best motorsport streaming services. You know, the one with all the different onboards and different feeds. And NordVPN is super fast, so I never miss a beat. But Nord is a lot more than a VPN just for race week. It's a protection and privacy tool for everything. Surf the web safely without worrying about malware, tracker, and ads, and keep your private data and information safe with their encrypted service. And don't worry, one account protects up to six different devices at once. So get your exclusive NordVPN deal at NordVPN dot com front slash break f1 it's risk-free with nord's 30-day money back guarantee you have nothing to lose now let's imagine that the back off front wing was our car's baseline and we want to know what would happen if we lost this car characteristic and had to rebalance around it which is what we're speculating could have happened to aston martin the assumption is our car has a back off front wing and the rest of the car is pretty well balanced going from the back off front wing as your baseline to a rigid front wing would look something like this you would end up with a very forward high speed balance trending towards the similar balance in low speed. The result being you'd have a very oversteery car in high speed and we need to rebalance this. And there's a few ways we can do that in order to get back to the same overall car balance characteristic. You could reduce the front wing angle, which would match the high speed balance to your baseline, but then you would have understeer at low speed and you could try to compensate for that with mechanical setup like the anti-roll bars of the car. Or you could keep the forwards aero balance at high speed and the load and try to rebalance the high speed of the car with anti-roll bars. But the idea of rebalancing aero balance with mechanical balance isn't really just that straightforward. Very rarely can you directly swap aero balance for mechanical balance, especially not for every phase of the corner. For example, you may be able to rebalance the apex of a corner this way, but you might not ever be able to get the same entry balance and the corner entry is very important for the overall corner. Now that we've got a few ideas of what the flexi wing could mean for handling, balance, and performance, let's look at how Aston Martin's performance characteristics have changed throughout the season. Considering their results started to drop off around Spain, let's split the season into Monaco and before, and then Spain up until now. Now this is a pretty cool bit of analysis, something similar to what I would have been doing back in the day at Red Bull or Force India. And this is a way that you can split down a team's performance into not only straight line, but also break down high speed, medium speed, and low speed cornering performance. Now keep in mind, this may not perfectly describe a single circuit, it's more representation of several circuits in a bunch. Now this first figure takes us up to Monaco. At the start of the season, Aston Martin's top speed performance was pretty terrible. They were one of the slowest cars in a straight line. They had a lot of drag on their car, but it also came with a reasonable amount of downforce. But if we look at their cornering performance, Aston Martin had basically the high speed cornering performance as the front runners, with the exception of Red Bull. They 
also had excellent medium speed performance on par with Ferrari and again just behind Red Bull here and in the low speed they had excellent performance matching Ferrari and they were both stronger than Red Bull at the start of the season here. Now this also kind of lines up with what we discussed before. Done properly a back off front wing could give you more medium speed and low speed performance relative to a rigid wing. Now as with anything in Formula 1 and data this is not necessarily a smoking gun but it is an interesting correlation. But if we look at the races from Spain onwards it's a much different story and a lot has changed. Now, in terms of top speed, the Aston Martin did improve. They're somewhere between Ferrari and Mercedes, but they have massively dropped off in medium and high speed performance. I'd expect this means that they are struggling with downforce relative to the others, but it's not exactly that straightforward. Downforce is also very important for low speed corners, and they're still very competitive here. And that makes me think it's not exactly a downforce problem, more something has changed about their car or it's an operating window change from development that's really pushed them away and made them not so competitive in these states. And don't forget all this analysis in quite a bit more detail will be live on my Buy Me A Coffee page shortly after this video goes live. In addition to that, you get a detailed breakdown of qualifying in the race for every F1 weekend. The link's in the description below if you want to check that out. From the data that we have, it's not really clear to say that Aston Martin have struggled directly as a result of Technical Directive 18. However, their results and their performance profile from the data has changed drastically from about the point at which the FIA started making noise about this flexi wing situation. Based on my past experience and what we've discussed here, I think that losing the back off front wing could potentially be a characteristic that is detrimental to not only high and medium speed corner entries. Also keeping in mind that if you lose a favorable arrow characteristic like the one we described, you will be forced to make very interesting compromises between where you put performance in high speed and low speed. And a further point worth noting, outright down force alone does not guarantee performance. Everything is about balance. But there are a few other possibilities. What if Aston Martin's demise is something a lot more simple than losing a trick front wing? It is entirely possible that Aston Martin have been outdeveloped. Keep in mind that teams are bringing upgrades throughout the entire season. I mean, look at how much the back markers have fallen off here compared to the start of the season up to Monaco. And then if you look at after Spain, the gap has grown massively to these teams. Aston have managed to hang on, but just barely. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it's literally a product of everything we've discussed, but it's also difficult to deny that they've had a clear loss of performance about Spain in the championship. But now, rather than just hearing about a flexi wing, I hope that you found a little bit more understanding about how all of this works together. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to check out the links in the description, and I've left a couple of more technical analysis videos here for you to enjoy.